They're trying to piss people off. That's their whole goal. That's the, what the Obamas are here to do, is to make you fight against each other. Uh, the other prayers that they had, the next one was to the God, let's see, God of many understandings and then the Lord of all nations uh, by Rick Warren. And, and he even ended that with Amen. And we'll get to why he was worshiping Amen. Uh, so Barack talks much about his religion, uh, which he doesn't seem to really have much of one if you look at it from a traditional standpoint. But it was very curious when he made this remark. What I was suggesting, you, you are absolutely right that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith. And you're absolutely right that that has not Christian come faith. My, my Christian faith. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> 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 so many people think that he might be the Antichrist, and so some of them use the uh, typical techniques of trying to understand Satanism in reverse speech. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> reverse speech is one of Satan's favorite tools. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. <laughs> That's what you get when you play Yes We Can backwards. <laughs> thank you, Satan. Yes, he can. Thank you, Satan. Yes, he can. Uh, but I don't, I, I don't go that route, okay? I, I'm, I believe that the Bible is kind of a script that they're following. I think an Armageddon type of scenario that they're outlining and setting up and following, and it's actually maybe extraterrestrial in origin. And I guess you're going to have to get to my DVDs to get to more of the extraterrestrial connections, because I'm going to try and get this done here. Um, okay, so the questions of Obama's bloodline and who he is, uh, uh, you know, distant relations to Bush, right? Well, they also found that the bloodline runs through a number of other families, which are very curious. I, I found it very curious that we have never gotten rid of the aristocracy. We like to believe that we have, that we're electing people into office, and that celebrities are just there because they're really good at what they do. But when you start to track bloodlines and understand who these people are, and that they are basically Egyptian uh, revived, if you realize that we're just in another Egyptian uh, culture, and that these people keep their bloodlines intact and this is why they have sex with their sisters and mothers and daughters and they have to keep a genetic bloodline and I sometimes wonder if that's what I have is this what channeled this information for me because like you know I'm doing this at 10 not knowing what it means but all of a sudden 20 years later I find out what it all means and it all has to do with what my dad's doing so I believe in genetic memory genetic memory is a scientifically proven fact so if we realize that these guys are trying to keep a particular memory together and interbreed so that this memory is passed down, then you start to realize, because, I mean, what are the odds that Hillary is related to Angelina Jolie and Obama's related to Brad Pitt, <laughs> All right? McCain's related to Britney Spears and George Bush is related to Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> and they're all related to Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> But they introduce other bloodlines into there every now and again. If they feel they need a little bit more matricing. Oh, and Hillary's also related to Madonna. Madonna and Angela and Angela Lady. And Celine Dion, who has happened to be with the, uh, the hologram representation of Elvis on, on American Idol. Uh, she does look like She has his eyes. Mm -hmm. I never realized that. But Pauline yeah. Pierce, her mother, went off to France with this old man to have a sexual ritual, which the OTO do. No one knows for sure if she came back pregnant or got pregnant afterwards, but she came back and gave birth to little Barbara right after her reunion with uh, Aleister Crowley. Yeah. And so uh, this man actually is the son of a beast, or the grandson of a beast, being that he was known as the beast. <laughs> he was known as the most evil man in the world. Yeah. Okay, so I've been tracking all these type of symbolic gestures and everything that's going on, and I realized that like when W went to visit the Pope, they visited in St. John's Tower on 1013, or Friday the 13th, which uh, is the 1013 that the Templars were killed. That's why Friday the 13th is the most unlucky day. Uh, George W. Bush goes visit the Pope, and he takes him to St. John's Tower, which is in honor of the Templars in 1013, and they do it on Friday the 13th. And uh, this has never happened before. They don't uh, bring guests to St. John's Tower. 
What's the um, scan signal he's doing? Yeah, isn't that he's, he's, he's a UT, UT fan. fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, you know, let's keep it straight that Pope Ratzinger, uh, who took on Pope Benedict, which is the name of the title of the guy who was in charge of the Templars, and also the Pope that was in charge during World War I. Uh, they choose these names very carefully. Benedict is Benedict's rule, which is the rule that uh, created the Templars. And he has now established that the Templars are okay. We didn't find any problem. We actually misread all the transcripts and uh, all those things we said about them kissing people on the anus and pissing on the cross and all that. Forget about it. You know, we, we exonerate the Templars completely. It was found out that you know, Mr. Uh, Hitler Youth from Bavaria, where the Illuminati was formed, uh, was investigating in the Illuminati and the Templars long before they came out and said, we found this mysterious document that exonerates the, the Templars. So according to the Vatican, the Templars are okay again. No worries there. So who is this man we call the president? I'm doing a story on space-based weaponry and uh, the coupling of DOD with NASA. This is how I started my Obama investigation. And I'm trying to understand how this uh, fits into Warner Von Braun's predictions. And so what this is is an X-band radar. This is a radar that was on uh, an oil rig that was shipped out of Texas just a day before Katrina hit. Everybody forgot about the X-band radar after that. <laughs> what the X-band radar does is it, it scans the system for barium. It can detect barium in any system. It can track barium all over the planet. And then we have the HARP facility over here. And the HARP is an antenna array in Gakona, Alaska, which I have a film about. You can watch on my website. You can get it here at the bookstore. Uh, HARP is an antenna array that shoots ultra-low frequency waves into the ionosphere, and with that they can manipulate uh, different frequency modulations, causing earthquakes, causing floods. As a matter of fact, the USA Today reported, Milosevic accuses U.S. of using HARP technologies to cause earthquakes and floods in the Middle East. Yeah. Front page of the USA Today. My problem is that they don't database the USA Today. So because I did not collect and hold all those papers from 1999 and 90s, uh, I don't have the evidence to show you. Nobody databases the USA Today. Mm -hmm. But they've given all these Masonic clues and secret symbols, and I tell you straight out that Milosevic was accusing U.S. of using this technology to cause earthquakes and floods. And so what is happening is we're all being chemtrailed, right? We all know this, right? We see the grid pattern, but what is it for? Well, two of the main ingredients within the chemtrails is aluminum and barium. So one is so that you're tracked by the X-band radar, which left out of here just before Katrina, went all the way around Central America to set up next to the Hart facility in Alaska, where Governor Palin is, right? Uh, and then, of course, the Hart facility runs on a, a radio frequency to, uh, communi er, waves, uh, using ultra-low radio frequency waves, so the aluminum in your system has now made you a perfect antenna. So now you are a perfect component for these two systems to work against you. All of this was put together and is now housed in uh, Cheyenne Mountain, which is the, the home of the Missile Defensive Shield. And when they announced that they were moving the Missile Defensive Shield to Cheyenne Mountain, which if any of you are familiar with Stargate, uh, that is Space Command. That is Cheyenne Mountain where the Missile Defensive Shield was put. That's Colorado Springs. Uh, as soon as they announced that the Cheyenne Mountain or Missile Defensive Shield would be put in a Cheyenne Mountain, a, a rocket burnt throughout our atmosphere, and I watched this as it happened, and uh, it miraculously was heading to a missile silo at the time. Uh, I have a friend with a $2 million home in a missile silo, and this big burning apparatus just looked like the Empire State Building burning across the atmosphere came across. I thought we were under attack, because building a Missile Defensive Shield, a HARP facility, a, a force field, we now have a force field. This is against the SALT II Treaty. This is against the Strategic Arms Limitation Mutual Destruction. This is saying, okay, now we got a force field we can launch and you can't launch back. Because HARP can shut off all electronics in specific. So we do have a missile defensive shield. But all of this starts to sound a bit like a sci-fi story. But how close are these sci-fi stories to reality? Can we call this 